In the heart of the Australian outback, a man and his canine companion mysteriously seem to vanish into thin air. With no clues, authorities are baffled, but as time goes on, it appears that there were many bitter battles between neighbours and foul play is suspected. How could a man and his dog suddenly disappear from a settlement of only 11 residents? Tonight on Dark Curiosities, the lost companions of Larima, the vanishing of Kelly and Paddy Moriarty. The hamlet of Larima lies in Australia's Northern Territory, 158 kilometres southeast of Catherine and over 400 kilometres from Darwin, the capital of the territory, on the edge of the Stuart Highway, notorious for the 2001 disappearance of Peter Falconio, a British tourist who was later found to have been murdered. The stretch of road is also linked with numerous other mysterious disappearances. With 11 people residing in Larima and the average age being almost 70, it seems very much like a peaceful place to live. However, there have been strong suggestions that the neighbours feud constantly with one another. And interestingly, Australian Aborigines refuse to visit or live there, adamant that the place is haunted. There are only two places where the public could gather. The hotel and pub named the Pink Panther and a cafe called Franz Devonshire Tea House. Both businesses, according to locals and journalists, are perpetually at war. It was the 16th of December 2017 when 70 year old Irish born labourer Paddy Moriarty and his red Kelpie cross named Kelly travelled to the Pink Panther, where he was a regular customer. Kelly had only been with Paddy for three months, following the death of his beloved dog, Rover. Paddy's close friend, Barry Sharp, was the publican of the establishment and well known for owning many exotic creatures, including rare birds, snakes and a saltwater crocodile named Sneaky Sam, who became the main attraction of the Pink Panther. On that humid Saturday in December 2017, Paddy had several rounds of alcoholic beverages and then, at some point, estimated between 6pm and 6.30pm, departed to return home, having also made an arrangement with Barry to collect his lawnmower the next morning. He drove his quad bike to his residence, which had been a disused service station, and put a leftover chicken which had been gifted to Kelly by a tourist into the microwave. Sharp and Moriarty followed a ritual which they called going to church, which was just an event where they would meet up in the front room of the Pink Panther to watch Landline, a television programme which discussed issues in farming, fisheries and mining in Australia, whilst drinking beer. Concern was raised when Paddy didn't appear to watch the programme on the Sunday and never appeared to pick up the lawnmower. Searches were carried out on Monday the 18th of December and authorities conducted a further three-day search midweek, yet these turned up no clues or even a speck of evidence. The Territory Response Group also carried out a search shortly after Christmas, but there was no trace of Paddy Moriarty or his faithful dog. When police investigated his home, nothing seemed out of place. Barry Sharp visited the home soon after realising his friend was missing, but upon seeing the house neat and tidy, he assumed Moriarty had gone to stay with a friend. The date on the calendar had been crossed off, his bed was made and his dinner was on the kitchen table, ready to be prepared to eat. On the table lay his hat, which he was never without, his keycard and glasses beside it. Since his disappearance, his bank account has also been left untouched. Detective Sergeant Matt Allen, who is leading the investigation, says that police are treating Paddy and Kelly's disappearance as suspicious, considering that no evidence has been uncovered despite an extensive land and air search. He believes it is likely that Moriarty is no longer alive. Following an incident many years previously where he acted in revenge by feeding pet peacocks to his crocodile in retaliation for a buffalo being made into pies, there were also whispers that Barry Sharp may have fed Kelly and Paddy to his croc, Sam, but this is widely regarded as fictitious. Friends Karen Rayner and Barry Sharp described Paddy as a good bloke, a gentleman, always cheerful and laughing, and would always inform others of his future plans. 
He helped with various errands at the Pink Panther and was, according to Barry, the type you wouldn't think would have an enemy in the world. Other residents of Larima would dispute this, however. Two residents were particularly vocal about their qualms with Paddy. Fran Hodgetts, the owner of the tea house, and Richard Simpson, a single-time bartender at the Pink Panther, labelled as being unpredictable and unpleasant. Upon these accusations, Richard claimed he had nothing to do with the disappearance and the authorities should be turning their attention to Hodgetts, of whom he described as short, fat, abrupt, rude, overbearing, unless you're doing something for her or doing her a favour. Fran was the owner of the Devonshire Tea House and a controversial character. Her business sold mostly tea, scones and pies to passing travellers and she frequently boasted about her apparent success. However, online reviews would contradict her claims, the food being described as overpriced and of terrible quality. She had argued many times with Paddy Moriarty and Barry Sharp. The latter realised that Sneaky Sam was not enough to attract customers to the Pink Panther pub and therefore began baking his own meat pies, selling them for half the price of Franz, which caused friction between the pair. Paddy lived just across from the tea house and his relationship with Fran turned sour over the years, Paddy complaining about her customers parking by his property and placing a sign outside, advertising Barry's pies, writing Larima Hotel Best Pies in Town. Residents of Larima said that Paddy often told them to avoid eating any food made by Hodgetts as they were never fresh or homemade. Moriarty even suggested that his dog wouldn't even eat any of the products. Paddy gave her a nickname, the Bush Pig, which caught on with several others who lived in the hamlet, much to the disgust of Fran, who sought a protection order from the courts but was unsuccessful in her request. She told the police that she saw Paddy Moriarty four days before he vanished and she also accused him of throwing a dead kangaroo near her house, thieving from her and damaging her property. Rumours circulated about Fran, who apparently said she wished Paddy dead, but she denies this. At an inquest in June 2018, 75-year-old Fran Hodgetts stated that authorities investigated her house four times and didn't find any evidence and suggested it would be physically impossible for someone of her age to kill and dispose of any bodies. An employee at the tea house, Bobby Roth, suggested that Hodgetts had shown her distaste for Moriarty in the past, quoting Fran as stating, I'll kill Paddy. Furthermore, there was speculation that she had slain Paddy and Kelly and cooked them in the pies she sold at the tea house. Hodgetts turned focus to the gardener of the tea house, 71 year old Owen Laurie, who had supposedly argued with Paddy about his dog, who had been barking in the middle of the road just three days before they vanished. Laurie is speculated to have said for Kelly to shut up or I'll shut it up for you. Owen confessed that he did have a bad temper but denied any involvement. Barry Burke, another resident known as Cookie, disliked Paddy as well, saying he would make trouble in an empty house, was his own worst enemy and stated, I'll be honest with you, I felt like breaking the guy's neck sometimes but it never happened. He did say however that he is innocent and has no time to do stupid things like that. As of late 2018, Paddy and Kelly's fate remains unknown and nobody has been charged with any crime. Moriarty's house has security cameras installed in order to check for any suspicious activity and a missing poster hangs outside, featuring the question, what happened to Paddy? Patrons of the Pink Panther regularly speak about Paddy, who had such an impact on the community of Larima and will be deeply missed by those who cherished him. With small settlements, gossip tends to twist the tale and police are certain the death was not by misadventure or suicide, but something more sinister. Authorities have been unable to trace any relatives of Paddy Moriarty or next of kin in Australia and Ireland. 
In February 2018, Detective Sergeant Allen reached out to the public in the search to find Kelly, the Red Kelpie Cross, who would have been approximately 12 months old at the time of his appeal, describing her as having big ears, a white chest and a small white patch on the nose. He believes that if Kelly is found alive, she could hold vital clues as to what happened on that December night and what became of her master.